So now we're on our last video of the veins. So these are the veins below the diaphragm that you have to know. So here is your drawing uh, that I gave you, the path flow through the veins below the diaphragm. Remember, veins are taking all the blood up towards the inferior vena cava, and the inferior vena cava will then deliver it to the right atrium. So instead of the arrows going down in this direction, like they do in arteries, remember the arrows, the blood flow is going up. Now, most of these names are going to be exactly what you've already learned with the, the arteries. Always make sure when you are labeling any blood vessel, it ends with a little V if it's a vein or a little A if it's an artery. You have a left renal vein and you have a left renal artery. So always end your blood vessel with a V or an A. Just so we, I'm sure you know where, if you're on the venous side or arterial side. So we are going to start distally because the blood is be going, starting distally and going um, on up. We're going to start with the posterior tibial vein, basically in the same location as the posterior tibial artery behind the lower leg. We're going to have the anterior and tibial, tibial vein taking its blood up back into the, the popliteal fossa where it's going to join the posterior tibial vein forming the popliteal vein. The popliteal vein will de then deliver its blood to the right femoral vein, and then the right femoral vein will go under the inguinal ligament to connect to the external iliac. The right and in the internal iliac will join the external iliac and deliver the blood to the common iliac. The common iliac will then take it to the inferior vena cava. So the right and left side are exactly the same. Now, what is different in the venous circulation, we have superficial veins, just like we have in the upper extremity. The one that I want you to, to concentrate on is this great saphenous vein. Now, this great saphenous vein is going to be running all the way from the medial aspect of the foot all the way up and it's going to drain its blood into the femoral vein on both sides. So you're going to have these great saphenous veins on both sides medially that are draining the superficial tissues and taking it to the femoral veins, respect, the respective right and left femoral veins. Now, these are prone to varicose veins. We've already talked about varicose veins. And if they become real bad, they can actually um, strip these out, take them out. There is collateral flow, meaning there is going to be flow from this superficial vein to the deeper veins of the leg. So essentially, all the, the venous blood will be directed into those deeper veins if you do need to take the superficial vein out. So I just wanted to show you a, a visual of what I mean by collateral blood flow. So let's assume this is your left great saphenous vein and it's draining into the femoral vein up here. So these are this is representing your deeper veins that are surrounded by skeletal muscle. So this is what I mean by the collateral flow. There's going to be these branches that are taking the venous blood from the great saphenous into these deeper veins that are surrounded by skeletal muscle. So even if you remove the saphenous vein, you are still going to be able to direct uh, the, the venous blood into these deeper veins of the, the lower leg. So if you look at your little blank man, I drew these in for you. Remember, these are following, following the numbers on your guide to arteries and veins. So here's showing you the anterior tibial vein with the posterior tibial vein joining to form the popliteal vein, which then goes 
into the femoral vein. Here's the great saphenous vein. Remember, this is a superficial vein. These are all deep veins. This great saphenous is a superficial vein. So the femoral vein then passes underneath the inguinal ligament and it will become the external iliac vein. The external iliac vein will join the internal iliac vein and form the common iliac vein, which will then take all that blood into the inferior vena cava. So let's see what that looks like on a diagram. So remember, we are going up in this direction. So we're going to start from down below. If you can, um, they're labeled for you. So find that anterior tibial vein. That anterior tibial vein is going to be going up, going through the fibula and tibia to reach the popliteal region where it will be joining. Here is the posterior tibial vein, where it will be joining the posterior tibial vein to form the popliteal vein. We are now in the popliteal region. And then that popliteal vein will go through, remember your adductor hiatus, that opening in the adductor magnus, which allows the femoral artery and vein to pass through. Well, now it is passing through that adductor hiatus and reaching the anterior leg. Remember, popliteal is posterior. So now we have the femoral vein. And now it's external um, iliac vein. Here is the internal iliac vein. And this is going to be your common iliac vein. Where do we have the great saphenous? So here, this is something called the dorsal venous arch. Dorsal means on top of the, the foot. We are going to be, that is where our great saphenous vein is going to be starting. This is the great saphenous vein, all on the medial side of your leg, and it's draining into the femoral vein. Here's the posterior view. So you will see the posterior tibial vein on the back side, joining your anterior tibial vein to form the popliteal vein. The popliteal vein will then go in, form the femoral vein. Here is the great saphenous vein on the medial side, going all the way up the medial aspect of the leg and going into the femoral vein. Pretty easy, right? Just to recap, you saw this with the femoral artery. Um, here is, this is the popliteal artery, and here is the popliteal vein. Now this model, it just stops, the popliteal vein just stops right here, but it doesn't really just stop there. The, the model's just showing you right there. So this is showing you the popliteal vein here, as it comes through the adductor hiatus here. Here is the inguinal ligament on the anterior um, portion of our leg model. So we can see the external, the external iliac artery and external iliac vein going underneath the inguinal ligament to give us our femoral artery and femoral vein. So the femoral, the, the vein, the femoral vein is going up in this direction and go, taking the blood up in this direction. So if we get to the abdominal, the abdominal um, veins, so we have here is our, here is our external iliac vein on, this is the right, the right side, and this is the left side. Here is the internal iliac vein, internal iliac vein. They are right next to their counterparts. Here's the external iliac artery, internal iliac artery, common iliac artery, same pattern, external iliac vein, internal iliac vein, 
common iliac vein and the common iliac veins are going into this huge inferior vena cava. So what do you need to know on the inferior vena cava? There is a lot less structures on here that you need to know as opposed to on the um, aorta. First thing you're going to see is the gonadal veins. So remember, here's the gonadal arteries coming off of the abdominal aorta. Now the gonadal veins are draining the, the gonads on the right side, this gonadal vein, it's draining straight into the inferior vena cava. On the left side, this gonadal vein, you can see it traveling with the gonadal artery, but then this gonadal vein does not go into the inferior vena cava. It is going into the left renal vein. So see that left renal vein. And then the left renal vein will take it into the inferior vena cava. Here is the right renal vein, left renal vein. Nothing else here that you need to know until we get to the very top. These are the hepatic veins. These hepatic veins are draining the liver. The liver's been removed, but the liver would be right here. So these hepatic veins are leaving the liver and taking bunch of blood into the inferior vena cava. So are you asking yourself what happens to, why is there no celiac trunk? Why is there no superior and inferior mesenteric veins? Hopefully that's what you're asking yourself. But let's see, this is deceiving. All it looks like is, hmm, all we've got is gonadals and renals. What about all this other stuff that's draining the stomach, the esophagus, the pancreas, the small and large intestines? Where are those veins? So, this is what's really happening. So, all we see on the abdominal, um, on the inferior vena cava here is this, the hepatic veins leaving the liver. So, here are the hepatic veins way up here. So here's the, the veins draining the stomach, the veins dra draining the spleen, the veins dra draining the pancreas, the, the small and large intestines. All these veins that are draining all these abdominal organs are going to be entering this structure that you don't need to know right now. We'll get to this when we get to the digestive system. This is the hepatic portal vein. The hepatic portal vein. Remember, hepatic has to do with the liver. This is delivering all the used up deoxygenated blood from your abdominal organs into the liver. Now, the liver has a very special job. That's why it's the largest organ in, in you. But all you have to know right now is the hepatic veins leaving the liver. There's a lot of stuff that's going on in between here and here that we'll talk about when we get to the digestive system. So right now you do not need to know all this that's going on. Just try to understand that truly there's a lot of veins going into the liver, but right now all you have to know is these hepatic veins. So did I confuse you? This is all you have to know. Inferior vena cava, right gonadal, left gonadal, left renal, right renal, hepatic veins. For now, that's all you need to know. On your torso model, they're not even showing you anything to do with, with the liver. Nothing. All this is showing you is you can see, so external iliac vein, external iliac artery, internal iliac vein, internal iliac artery, common iliac vein, common iliac artery. Same on the other side. Inferior vena cava. Here is the right gonadal vein going straight into the inferior vena cava. 
Here is the left gonadal, kind of traveling with the left gonadal artery, but the left gonadal vein goes into the left renal vein, and the renal veins dump into the inferior vena cava. So not too bad with the veins, right? Nope, not too bad. So I wanted to go through this. We had talked about veins and how they're, they're built. Make sure you understand the tunics, uh, the difference between an artery and vein and the tunics and why the lower extremity veins were prone to varicose veins. I had a whole video on that, talking about the valves. But now we're going to talk about something a little bit different. It's called chronic venous insufficiency, a condition that occurs when the valves within the leg veins are damaged and allowing blood to leak backwards and pool. You're getting pooling of these veins. Remember, when you're standing, the blood in your leg, leg veins has to be pushed up against gravity to return to your heart. So gravity is pushing down. We talked about the skeletal muscles. Every time you walk, they're helping squeeze the, the venous blood back up. So we talked about varicose veins, but with chronic venous insufficiency, these, these leg veins, they're under a lot of stress from gravity. The walls be, can become um, thinned, Remember the walls of veins, the tunics of the veins is pretty thin to begin with. So if you're getting pooling of venous blood, that pooling is going to be stretching out those veins, stretching out those veins, and you're going to actually start getting leakage of, of fluid into the lower extremities. That's called edema. So you're going to start seeing these legs get swollen, they're edematous, leg swelling. And once, once the skin starts stretching out, because now the skin is swollen, you're going to start getting skin color changes on the skin. It's going to turn different colors. You know, it's going to get a darker pigment. And pretty soon you will ask, actually get venous ulcers, kind of um, equivalent to the, the ones we sh I showed you on the arterial side. You can get arterial ulcer, or ulcers too because of lack of oxygen. But venous ulcers are a different pathology that's forming here. So here's patients with venous stasis. Venous stasis means the blood is just not flowing properly back up. And pretty soon you're going to start getting these ulcers forming, venous stasis ulcers. So what can you do for these patients? The first line is you're going to get these pressure stockings. I'm sure a lot of you heard about pressure stockings um, or TED, TED hose. Now these have pressure, a gradient pressure built into them. The pressure starts real high at the ankles and it gets less as it's going up. And this pressure is pushing on the legs and help keeping that venous blood flowing upwards. The other thing you should be having your patients do is not do this. <laughs> Don't sit with your legs straight down where gravity is going to keep pulling the blood. Have them sit with their feet elevated. Have a hassock. Get them in a recliner so their, their legs are actually above the level of the hips. So you can get the blood flow going back to the heart uh, much, much easier. This is really hard on these poor veins. This is just showing you a diagram of what's happening. Remember, we have the thin walls of our, our tunics. The, tunic, the tunics here and the veins are pretty thin. So we're going to get these floppy walls. Then you're going to get venous. The valves are not going to be working right. And then you're going to get pulling of the blood. So what these stockings are doing is pushing on those walls the walls of the veins to help keep the veins working properly and keeping that blood going up towards the heart. 
Well, we are now done with the veins.